Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, select board of the town of Sunderland. It's June 1st, 2021. Uh, call to order at uh, 639. Um, our first order is uh, minutes of May 24th. What do you think, uh, David? I think motion on the minutes. Crystal? I second it. <laughs> All right. All right, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes as presented from May 24th. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next up is new business. So um, I'd like to, Lori, are you here? Lori is here. Lori, you wanna give a uh, COVID-19 state of emergency update? I can say one word. Okay. <laughs> Zero. Again. Nice. That's two in a row. In a row. Yes, That's it awesome. Is. It is. It's very, very good. Sunderland's doing very good. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. um, I did see that the um, pooled. COVID vaccine testing site that FERCOG has been running at GCC has run its last run. Um, I think they're all done. There will be one more vaccination site up in Charlemont, I think Sunday, June 13th, and people can still sign up to get a vaccine there, but it's, it's widely available now at CVS and Big Y and other places, so. Um, so, so did we want, Lori, did you want to talk about what the state says that we can or can't do right now? So, so basically, um, you may inside and outside without mask, maintain social distances would possible. Provided I, I the place that you're at says you don't have to wear a mask. There are still places that are requiring you to wear masks. So, and, and, and that's all, pre that, that was basically also is if you've had your shot both, yes, or shots vaccine. yep, vaccinated. and you had the 14 vaccinated. days, right? Yep. yep. I, I, I would say that I, I, I would ask that right now, um, it was, it was kind of a little strange over the weekend at different places. Um, there was some places that had 70, 80 percent of the people wearing masks, and other places there was no one wearing a mask. Um, and and I think some of the the, the small businesses, small restaurants, um, I, I I would just ask for patience and understanding, just because you had the uh, um, a shot or two. And you waited the two two weeks doesn't mean that you have a bulletproof vest on. So um, and sure. and and under and I would understand. You know, I would ask you to understand um, that the people may may still have some people may still have concerns, and that you should be respectful of those concerns. You know, so and and I did read. You know, statewide there has been three hundred documented cases of COVID from fully vaccinated people. So it is possible for you to get it, even if you've had the vaccine, the vaccine will help you have a lighter case of it and hopefully keep you out of the hospital. <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay. Anything, David, do you have any questions? Uh, nope. I think Just, I, I, one thing I, I heard that over this week that was really interesting, I don't remember the exact numbers, but because of all the mask wearing that we've been doing because of COVID, the regular flu numbers were like dramatically lower and the number of deaths were like a mere fraction of, of what they are. And I thought that was an interesting little stat, sort of a side benefit, I guess, that we got from wearing masks for COVID. So Allergies are the same way. People yeah. have noticed their allergies are much less because you've been wearing, we've been wearing masks. Your mask just turns green because of all the pollen, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
but that's good. Crystal, you have anything to add? I have nothing to add at this point. Okay. Lori, thank you very much. Um, Jeff, Jeff will be, I, I guess, you know, we probably, I think we still got another couple of weeks before we're out of what, quote unquote, the emergency order. So we'll probably maintain having you come back to talk to us for the next couple of weeks until uh, we move out of the emergency declaration, okay? Yep, Governor Baker is due to lift it, he said, June 15th, providing yeah. things keep going the way they are. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lori. I'll be here. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Um, now, we, we are going, going, we have a couple things. First is, uh, um, Jeff, did you want to talk about the library reopening plan? Sure. Kathy, are you on? Yeah. Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay. Oh, hi, Catherine. Hi, nice to see you guys. Hello. Nice to see you also. Do you want to discuss the reopening plan? Sure. Do forgive me, I'm doing double duty here. But uh, congratulations, <laughs> by the way. Home. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the, the Board of Library Trustees um, are interested in reopening um, the library, and we want to do it just like on a very, um, very slow basis. So we're, we're hoping that on June 15th, we can open up on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 1pm to 8pm, which was our regular time. Um, and then we will uh, reassess at the, um, at the June meet at the trustees meet at the end of the month, at the end of June, and then we'll reassess for July if we want to uh, reopen further um, or or change any of the policies. Um, but the plan is that we would um, allow a limited number of people into the building at a time on on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but it, no appointments needed. People could just walk in, um, and that we would require folks to wear masks while they're in the building. Um, and our reasoning behind this is that. Um, we're about to start a summer reading program for children um, who are not able to be vaccinated. Um, so we anticipate having a lot of children um, in the library and we just wanna um, use it as a courtesy to, to the families who might be using the library and make everyone feel a little more comfortable. It just seems like that's the safest course of action. Okay. David, any questions? No, I don't think I've read through the plan and everything. So it seems you know, seems pretty straightforward in that respect. So, so Jeff, do we have do we have that information on the uh, web page? Uh, once it's been confirmed that that's the plan, I'm happy to share whatever information um, Catherine wants me to put up there. But yeah, yeah, okay. I was waiting until um, until I, this meeting, and um, I haven't heard back from the Board of Health if they had any changes to the plan before I, I started to advertise. But uh, um, probably tomorrow I'll start to advertise, so I'll I'll send that to Jeff to confirm. Yeah, we okay. can just link to your site. So. Yep. Yep. It'll yeah. be on the homepage of the website. Catherine, that's good news. I. Uh, yes. Thank you. Well, I, I bet you there's a lot of people that want to get back in the library, get back to use the computers. I mean and uh, be able to and browse the shelves. I mean, that's pro the, look, go through the stacks has probably been a long time. Well, it's been, it has been what, 14 months, 15 months, it's been a long time. So yeah. I'm sure there's people that want to get back and, and that's a very big part of their normal life. So act, that's great news, great news. Yeah, we're looking forward to it too. Excellent, okay. Thank you, Catherine. Congratulations. Yeah, and it's been quiet all that time. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's about to about to start. So I'll yeah, I get it. Well. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Nice Mate. to see you, Catherine. All right, Jeffrey. Um, let's let's talk about let's go the uh, I think we got um, the reopening plan. Now we want to we basically had the 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 meeting pretty light schedule. Just uh, I, I'd like to mention before we go into the meeting that one of the things that new business we had asked for Mass DOT to attend tonight's meeting to discuss the North Main Street job, but Mass DOT believes that they don't have to come talk to us. So um, I would say that Jeff is going to uh, be composing a letter. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. We have concerns with 
um, the contractor's disregard of the uh, um, work around trees where tree uh, where there's equipment is parked, how they're digging or not, you know, with or without spades. With we're concerned about public safety with the way they leave the road. Um, we're concerned with the dust. We're concerned with the noise. Um, I, I we. I mean, if anybody tried to use the road over the last three days, I, I'm surprised we didn't find more hood caps along littering the 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 roadways. So, um, Jeff is going to be uh, be writing a letter, and he will be CCing it to our state representative and our state senator, um, because it's pretty important that Mass Highway be able to. Um, be held accountable for their work and right now they just want a letter um i guess the old face-to-face -face zoom or meeting doesn't work for them um so if if mass highway ever decides to come to a meeting we will ensure that we publicize to the residents of Sunderland so that they could they choose, they can come and they can talk to Mass Highway also. But right now, um, Jeff will write a letter as they're asked. So the next thing is we're gonna talk about the uh, warrant for the annual town meeting, which is June 12th, 4 p.m. behind the town office building and the budget. Jeff, how do you wanna start? Um, it might be easiest to talk about article 10 first that's okay. the revolving funds and then yep. if you choose to however you choose to recommend it and then we can get into the budget okay. um so the they they reached out to the inspectors and there were uh well actually all the the users of the revolving funds um and there were I am recommending some increases this year. Um, I think there were, for the inspectors, it was um, recent changes in uh, fee structure, increasing the fees, as well as the fact that uh, it continues to be busy for them. Um, and I don't think this, this has been revisited for a number of years. Um, and don't have my notes, but I could probably find it quickly. Um, I think this is the one. Um, that includes, yes, it does, what the originals were. So the wiring inspector um, or last year was 9,000, and we're proposing to increase it to 20,000. Plumbing inspector was 3,000, proposing 6,000. Board of Health uh, would remain the same at 16,500. The Sunderland Public Library community room would go from 5,000 to 15,000. Fire inspector, 7,000 to 10,000. And then highway shared equipment would remain stable at 23,000. Um, and uh, with with regard to the Sunderland Public Library community room, that's those funds are used for larger purchases. Um, an example was a, a projector, um, you know, costing several thousand dollars. And basically, what this does is just sets a, a cap on how much can be expended from a revolving fund in the fiscal year. Um, and specifically for our inspectors, that's um, how they get their income. Um, so if they're doing the work and they're not able to, you know, re receive their portion of the fees because of this limitation, we wanna certainly increase it and um, pay them for their work. Yeah, and, and this, uh... And again, the it's it's not money. It's money like the Sunderland Public Library community room. It's money that they that they collect for um, events that are held in the community room. 
and that they expend the money in all of our, and you got to remember the wiring, our electrical inspector, our plumbing inspector, board of health, those are all fee for services. So basically, um, when, when they got, somebody wants to, uh, goes in for an electrical permit, the fees um, that a charge is how the inspector gets paid. And that includes that, and the inspector also is, in, you know, he has to maintain his classes, his CEUs. Um, so there, there's a lot of things that are involved with it just besides collecting a paycheck. So, and the town doesn't, the town doesn't pay for that. That comes out of their fees. So, okay. David or Crystal, any questions about the uh, revolving funds? No, that's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> okay, without hearing any other uh, conversations on the uh, revolving fund, I will enter entertain a motion to uh, recommend the uh, value set forth in the revolving funds. Uh, motion. Crystal, are you talking to us? I seconded it, but if... Okay. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero. Next. You want to talk, start talking about the budget now, Jeff? Sure. So this year we have a balanced budget and I'll start displaying it. Hopefully you can see it on your screens. Um, so this is the, the revenue page and I'll, I'll update the website um, based on the discussion tonight with this information, but um, you know, you'll see tax levy increasing slightly. This is the capital that was voted, I think in December. Um, this is the governor's proposed uh, local aid and educational aid, um, chapter 70, uh, using less than half of the free cash that we used last year. Um, still funding OPEB, and then sort of our, our liabilities down here. Um, I don't know, would it be helpful to go to the use of cash or? Yeah, yeah. look at that. So um, article two, unpaid bills. Here's the 123,000 of free cash for the operating budget. Here's the OPEB 32,000. At the last meeting, we talked about using stabilization funds for the radio replacement. So that was moved out of free cash or for the remainder that isn't funded through the capital budget. Yep. Um, and then we talked about, I should probably call that something else, not SES retirement. Um, the school, uh, elementary school employees, um, post-employment, uh, sick buyback and vacation, uh, firearms coming out of free cash, and then um, the mosquito control district. And we had talked about $3,000 at the last meeting. Uh, I did reach out to uh, the director of the Pioneer Valley mosquito control district um, and have not heard back. <laughs> um, I, I think that they had, I, I believe it's a board of directors that, that he reports to or, or some similar board. And he said that they would need to approve that. So, um, and then. I, hey, Jeff, I've, I've yep. talked to him. I, I talked to a member of their board. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so this is the capital budget. Uh, 122, 280 is the balance remaining from last year plus the 118,000 this year. Um, Comcast peg um, used in the budget. And then this is uh, CPA, right? wastewater and then CPA, the CPA articles. 
and then scrolling down, you'll see that uh, total cash reserves are about 5%, which is the combination of, or would be 5%, the combination of remainder of free cash and remainder of stabilization. Good. So what, what we look for final numbers for money left in uh, different accounts? So uh, free cash, the balance would be 164,384. Stabilization would be 425,643. Um, Comcast peg access 58,203. CPA, I believe it's 565,643. And then uh, sewer reserve 385,393. Good. Questions, Davey? Um, no, I think I'm actually pretty pleased with the way it ended up turning out, all things considered. So. Just a little while to get there, but that's good. Okay. 52 right, cents, Jeff. huh, Jeff? 52 <laughs> should cents. We, should we take out a bond for that or? <laughs> yeah. So I, I did that because when I. Uh, that's funny. When I did that, it said a dollar, but the budget and the revenues were equal. So I wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how far off it was. Good. Do you want me to go through the the budget detail, or have you had a chance to go no. through that and had any questions? No, I, or? I, I I was I David and Crystal. Do you have any questions? Are there any areas on the on the budget that you that you have specifically? No, I don't think so. I think I'm good overall. Well, I know you said you um, talked to them mosquito district thing. Yep. Um, is it going to be 3,000? Is there a chance it's going to go up to 5,000? Are we just going to deal with it if it goes up to 5,000? I, I, I have I, I've, uh, talked to them. Um, and a, a, as a first, you know, I talked to uh, one of the members on their board. And it, the first year, they, they, they do have some flexibility. Um, and they they actually have their other their other towns that are not paying the full five thousand this year. So okay. base, basically, um, three thousand would be more than there's a, there's a couple towns that are paying less than that right now. Okay. Um, and and I, I thought that would be a, a fair spot. So yeah, that, that's that, that's what that's what I'm recommending. Yeah. No, I just I wasn't sure what happens if they come back and say. No, right. we want five or that's right. it. Where do we get that other two from? Yep. Right. We're going to, we're going to have to uh, polish up on our negotiating skills, right? There you go. That should. Um, uh, is there is there any any specific things that we want to go over on the budget? Areas on the budget. Hmm. Nothing that jumps out at me. No, I don't have anything specific. Okay. Crystal, what do you think? Do you have any questions on the budget? I know it's kind of it, it's kind of new, so yeah. So I'm looking up stuff all the time, trying to figure out what it is. But um, I am I am okay at this point. Um, I figured out, you know, I've been able to get answers to anything I've had questions on. So okay, alrighty, Jeff. Is there any high points that you want to put out that you want to discuss? I think that, you know, sort of 
at the, you know, it, it's only 3% overall increase over last year, which I think is um, pretty, pretty impressive given given how we tried to budget last year or how we successfully budgeted last year. And, um, you know, part of, I I guess I'd echo David's that that we're in a good place. And I I just want to commend the various departments to, um, you know, not, not saying, okay, that was last year. Now we're going to go over the top this year because we had to cut. So I just um, wanted to recognize that as well. So, so Jeff, did you want us to talk about uh, the the town insurance going down this year? Um, which insurance? The town uh, insurance line, your line number two ten on the uh, on the spreadsheet, right under uh, Medicare. Yeah. So, I think it's because there was. Workers, I think what may have happened, and I'm not positive, I don't, I think that workers comp wasn't clearly broken out last year. And so it may have been included in the workers comp line and the town insurance. And you'll see that this year is much more in line with two years ago. Yep. Um, and, and so I, I, I think that's what may have happened. I may have doubled up on up. the workers comp and then realized my mistake last year and pulled it out. Okay. So, so can, can you talk about increases in salary for like, I, I look at the select board administrative assistant, 11.1% increase. Can you talk about that? Sure. So the salary survey that was done in, 2000 and um, 2019, 19, I, think? I think it was 19, yeah. Um, recommended, uh, you know, the, the salary ranges for, for employees. Um, and then there was, you know, looking at where, where are our employees were within those salary ranges. My understanding was that um, we thought a a multi-year phased approach was was the best way to move forward. Um, I believe that the first year, um, everybody was brought up to the minimum. And then then the second year, uh, those people who had five years or more of service um, were brought up to the middle of the range. And then there was a, a 2% COLA. And then this year, the people who are above five years were brought up additionally um, so for example, the administrative assistant, I think has uh, 23, 26 years. So more than 10 years of experience. So the recommendation was the top of the salary range. So that, that was the increase is going from the middle to the top and that's why it was 11%. So, wow. so David, I knew you, you, you've been on the personnel. Is, is, there a course, is there a corresponding evaluation process also um yeah there there and that's one of the things that we're looking at next in the next phase is to make sure that all of that is in, in tweaking that to make sure that's in place so that you have that part of it you know what i mean <clears throat> because we wanted to make sure we brought folks up but then we also want to have that part in there as well so we i think at this point we're pretty much done with the, the adjustments you know, and then, then I think you have to factor in like a periodic check to make sure you're still, you know, within range. So, so you're, so you're not, in, you're not anticipating 11% increases again next year. No, no, no. 
No, I think, you know, we, I, we haven't picked the time frame, but you want to pick it, you know, for sake of argument, say every, you know, X number of years, you go out and you reassess the survey. Right. And you get a market reference are. point. Is that like what you did? Yeah. Yep. You get that and market the, reference point. And I mean, I've seen a lot of market reference point adjustments. I've never seen on 11%. I'm not saying it's not deserved. It's just, that's a big pay increase. It, it was it was a good size again. We we had fallen pretty far behind a lot of the other ones, so I think that's why that ended up being like that. So hopefully we'll be in stride for a while. Right, that people aren't being paid ten percent less than they should be for years at a time. Yeah, exactly. And I know overall the the job market, the salaries have been kind of suppressed. So I think uh, there's there's starting to be a lot of adjustment on that out there just in the general marketplace. So, <clears throat> um, so I think that that tackled with the bulk of our issues there. So, and if anything, there'll just be minor adjustments. I think now that we're you know up on par with our peers. So. So, 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 Jeff, when you when you look at the town telephone expenses, the line item, um, how how what is that the total cost per year that we're spending right now? I believe that is the amount that the town office building is spending annually. So, so I got a question. Um, are, are we looking at, at, would, would we look at next year over the course of the or the next few months look at do we want to keep um telephones as we know them or do we want to look at cell phones um you mean totally replacing the telephones yeah, yeah. so my We, we can look into it. I think that there are, are certain lines that we need to have, um, obviously public safety. Um, we need to have a line for the security system, the phone in the elevator in the town office building. Uh, we, I don't know when, I think 20, sometime in, in the, 2017, 18, 19, I believe the whole town went away from traditional landlines to voice over IP um, yep. and made a not insubstantial investment in um, hardware related yep. to voice over IP. So uh, I don't know that we necessarily want to abandon that just yet. Um, But I think that there are, you know, and, I, I, and there are some nice features too. And I'll say, especially when I was working remotely during the beginning of the pandemic, having all my voicemails be recorded and sent to me via email so I didn't have to call in and check and I could respond more quickly. Um, I think there are some nice features. We can look at those options, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily something that I would recommend in the near future. I agree. I, I what I what I was thinking is, though, Jeff, is that is is a lot lot of places now are going away from the hard line. I mean, most most people no no longer have 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 hard lines. So, um, you know what, you know how how do we stay how do we stay one one step, you know, and and I I think it's just going to get more expensive trying to maintain, you know systems that are going to be uh, sunsetted they're going to be more probably more expensive to to operate so we have to start looking at you know what what's the best way to move 
to move us forward, you know? And, and again, when you look at, when you look at plans now with, uh, you know, how, how the phones operate, everything's backed up to the cloud and whatever. So it, it, it'd be good. I, I, I always thought it'd be, you know, for us, you know, technology changes so rapidly and it's always like the municipalities are like always one or two steps behind them. And, uh, and we, we need to, I, I, I mean, I have a desk phone at, at, at my job and I never, I, I never answer it because usually only people who call the, 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 the landline are salesmen or, yeah, tell them you know, or, or they're, or they're, or, or they're the, or they're wrong numbers. So, and most, most of the people just call me on the cell phone. So. Well, you know, we got, we just actually got rid of our phones in my office and we've Did got you? like. Yeah, we've got like 200 and some odd people. We initially went over to like a Cisco phone system with VoIP and everything. And now we've actually switched over to Microsoft Teams. So, I mean, it could be something we could look at down the road, you know, um, for, for at least some of the some of the lines. You're right, Jeff, there's some we're going to have to maintain probably for a long time for mechanical and system connections. But, but that could be something we could look at too. Okay. All right. All right, just wondering. Any, anything else that you want to hi, hi, highlight out of the budget, Jeff? Um, no. So, so I, I see that I, I, I see uh, from the FERCOG today that we're starting the uh, uh, migration to the to the new radio system. Yes. Yep. I think the first. Uh, deliveries to communities are going to be in the next week or so. Um, we were not on the, the list of first deliveries, um, but we are, we are on the list. <laughs> okay. All right. So this leads into my next question. Are we ready to, are we ready to submit this, uh, the number into uh, article four? I believe so. I, um, I, I'm not aware of any changes or anything outstanding that we're still waiting on. So I'm good to go. All right. So do you want a motion for that? Article four, yeah. All right. Uh, um, Motion for Article Four for is it nine million eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty nine dollars? Right, Jeff. That's the number for the budget. Right. Sounds right. Nine million eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty nine. Yep. So m motion to include, right? So Peter Gagarin, when you were a finance committee member many many years ago, did you ever think the town of Sunland would have a nine million dollar operating budget? Uh, it's, uh, you know, Tom, all I will say is if you put yourself five years in the future, if we're still around, it's going to seem like a small number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to maintain that perspective, right? Well, you know, it, it's interesting, but I remember Ed Gately, who was on the, who was a school committee chair. And I'm going to say 15 years ago, 16 years ago coming to us and telling us that we were going to uh, have to start planning for the addition to the elementary school because we're going to run out of space. And that was, I would say, 15 years ago, Dave. I mean, yeah, around there. Yeah, 15, 20 years ago. I, yep. So you, you, you're right. You never know what's going to happen with a budget. Crystal, what do you what do you think, Crystal? You like this nine million dollars budget? Um. <laughs> You know, obviously for me, it's the first time seeing these numbers and, you know, looking through there. And so there's a lot of eye opening for me on it. But, you know, when you stop and think about it, I can't say there's anything that's shocking or surprising. It's just you don't think how this is all going to add up when you aren't part of, you know, looking at it this detailed. Well, the only, you know, the only thing, Crystal, I think that you're, you're going to become more aware next year when, when we start the 
because because we the, basically the process starts in November. Yes, yeah, Peter. Um, Tom, I was just going to ask something, and that was that um, I think normally part of the process here, one of the last things you tend to give some sort of sense is is what this is, how this is going to impact the tax rate. And I know we've been uh, among the lowest in the county or in the surrounding area, and I just wondered if there was anything you could say at this point about how it's looking for the coming year. Jeff, did you look at that? Did you say it, anything? We should be benefiting from the capital capital projects getting paid off. Right. Yeah, I get. I can look and see how that will um, talk to the finance team and try and get an, an answer. We'll have that. We'll have that for next Monday night, Peter. Yeah, either that or just for town meeting, because because people are, you know, it, it matters to just people in town, and um, I think the number should be. You know, we should have a decent number this year because, again, we're we're we've done. This is the end of paying for the library and the public safety complex. So, yeah. Once we get the number, you know what? I usually do like a little chart comparing ourselves to all the surrounding towns. So we'll yeah. see. I don't think I don't think there's going to be a huge change really from where we stand in general. Well, you can. It was in the mm -hmm. uh, the Mass Live MassLive.com had that information. You could you could research and get all, I, and I had just written it down. It was interesting, Peter, I, I was just doing it last week or the other, the week before about the the surrounding, Hat, Hadley Lake had a $12.72 rate or something like that. Um, but as far as Franklin County goes, we were pretty low compared compared to a lot of other communities. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think our last was was fifteen dollars and forty nine cents, or in that ballpark. And yep. a lot of our a lot of our surrounding towns are, you know, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen dollars, so or higher. Or yeah, yeah. And and Deer, Deerfield and our, you know, Deerfield, you know, they're fi they got a fire district that's not figured into it, but our our rates are are pretty close. Um, so especially when you look at the amount of commercial property and things like that that we don't have you know that other towns have it's pretty good yeah. all things considered yeah so we will have that okay. all right so i have a motion crystal you're going to second that i would love to second that oh, oh okay uh, with enthusiasm so we have a motion made and seconded uh, to include the number of Nine million eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty-nine dollars into Article Number Four. Oh, any discussion? Without hearing any discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Now I'll take a uh, motion to recommend, David. Uh, motion to recommend the budget, as noted. Okay, I have a motion to recommend, right, Crystal. Second. It. Seconded. All those in favor of recommending from the board of, from the select board, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, Jeff. Three zero on that. Anything else we got on, on budget stuff right now? We did the capital budget, so good. Do you want Do you want to talk about the capital budget, Jeff? We did, um, I think we talked about it last week, but it never hurts to go over again. Uh, I can pull it up so everybody sees. Um, a little bit better. So, uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a $122,279.82. Um, that is for the fifth year of the truck lease for the highway department. Um, HVAC repairs at the library, um, 53,000 give or take from the $75,000 request for the radio replacements, uh, replacement of the kitchen steamer at the elementary school, uh, the second year of the rim band replacement around the exterior of the elementary school. Um, and that's all coming from uh, the, the capital stabilization and then wastewater treatment plant, uh, 8,700 for to replace the clarifier gearbox, and then 3,235 um, 
for an RAS pipe. And that's coming out of the sewer reserve fund. Okay. Are we on the last year of our truck lease for that? I believe it's a seven year lease. Seven year, okay. I couldn't remember how long we had that for, okay. Okay, I'll stop. Um, did we wanna do the uh, motions? Did we wanna do the motions tonight, Jeff? Um, Are you ready yeah. for that? Yeah, if, if you guys are ready and you've had a, a chance. As well. Okay, why don't you take us through it? Um, okay, our, uh, Article 1 motion. You know what? I'm going to pull them up so that everybody can follow along. Um, so article one is just the reports. Um, so basically the same as, as the warrant. Um, article two is unpaid bills. Um, there was an outstanding uh, bill from our auditors and want to keep the auditors happy, pay their bills. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, a fuel delivery payment um, and the, a busing payment and then a, a final payment for our previous IT service provider. Um, article three, positive, pretty positive. This was all these figures were in the warrant. So there's Nothing different there. Nope. Um, article four is just a breakdown of the budget and where it was coming from. Um, raise an appropriate eight million four hundred fifty-one thousand four hundred ninety-seven. Um, peg access fund fifty. This is basically comes from the revenue sheet we just reviewed. Wastewater treatment plant three hundred eighty-four thousand. Forty-seven dollars, and then here's the one twenty-three ninety-six from free cash. Um, and feel free to stop me at any point if you have questions or want to discuss anything in more detail. Uh, the capital budget um, again: one hundred twenty-two thousand two hundred seventy-nine eighty-two. Um, and then 11,935 for the sewer reserve fund for the wastewater treatment plant capital requests. Um, the emergency radio system, the, the balance from the $75,000 request was 21,933.66. Sick and vacation leave buyback for elementary school employees came out to $49,163.07 in free cash. Um, firearms replacement. And I will follow up with the chief tomorrow to make sure that this number is still good. He was gonna do some homework. Um, $9,000 for free cash to replace firearms. Uh, Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District. We talked about the 3,000 for free cash. Um, we already talked about the revolving loan funds and these were all in um, the warrant as well. And then we get to the CPA articles, which are the same as the warrant. Do you want me to go through each of those? No. Um, Article 16 is the municipal charges lien, which was discussed, I believe it was two weeks ago, maybe three now, yeah. um, for unpaid fees uh, to be tacked on to the property tax. Uh, Article 7 
is uh, the citizen petition um, regarding uh, non-enforcement of immigration policy by local uh, police. Um, article 18 is the article to uh, allow new employees to take one of their two years of vacation uh, after six months. Um, and then articles 19 through 24 are the consent articles. Okay, a little, little lighter than usual. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? So for homework, Jeff, I guess we need to uh, talk to the uh, assessors about the uh, tax rate. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Um, I guess uh, not. Not on the budget. Okay. Yep. Are we all set, Crystal? David, all set on the budget? Yep, I'm good. Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, town administrator updates. Okay. Um, good news this week. <laughs> Lots of good news. The nice. first is uh, we submit today was the deadline to submit our designs for Riverside Park to the grant program administrator, um, which we did. And she got back to us and said, designs look great move forward with construction starting July 1st. So that was Excellent. a hurdle. Um, that, that's great to hear. Um, and then the second thing is we got an announcement from the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Association stating that beginning June 21st, um, veterans can schedule VA telehealth appointments. Um, it has to be done online, but if you go to the Greenfield location at 294 Main Street. Um, staff can help set up an email for you. Um, they can help schedule the private telehealth room uh, if you don't have computer access. Um, they'll help you log in, get everything set. Um, my understanding, my reading of this is they'll get everything set up and then when you're connected with the healthcare provider, they would probably exit the room for, for privacy reasons. Um, and then come back in if there's an issue with closing down the connection. Um, but uh, people are encouraged to reach out to the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans um, Association if they need help um, in getting access to telemedicine. Excellent. Good. That's all my updates. Okay. David, update, select board. Uh, I don't have any updates this week. Crystal? I have no updates this week that any of you guys care about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I would just, you know, I, I, I would just want to say that it appears that we're um, beginning to exit the, the COVID pandemic thing. Um, I, I can't thank so many people for, for how they went above and beyond and, and what, what maybe miss, but things that happen is like the senior center continued to offer, um, meals during the entire time. Monday through Friday. And we've had volunteers uh, in our town in, in Deerfield and Whiteley, Conway, that that have been um, almost the entire time have been picking up meals and delivering them to our seniors. And not, not just seniors, but people that need meals. Um, Frontier and the, in the initial, when Frontier first started uh, um, through the COVID, Frontier assisted us with providing breakfast as well. So that, that was just one of the things that, that happened 
that not a lot of people know about. Um, but it made a difference in our community. And, and things like what Jeff just talked about, the, the veteran doing a telemed, if you know a veteran, um, let them know. Um, let, let them, you know, we, most, many, I'm not saying most, many of our veterans don't take advantages of the services that are, that are offered. And that's just one of the services that um, that they could use that that could help and, and make a difference in in their lives. So um, please notify a veteran and let them know what 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 what's available. Um, I think that's all set for me. We have a our next meeting will be next Monday night. Um, should be a, a a quiet agenda. Maybe Massey OT would want to uh, show up. Maybe. Jeff? Um, I was just speaking of the agenda quickly. Um, boarding committee appointments and, and appointed officials. Do you want to try and do that next week? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, but I also want to, we're, we're, uh, in the process of our annual town meeting is next Saturday. It's June 12th. Um, starts at 4 p.m. behind 12 School Street, the town office building. Is there uh, any, uh, before I ask for adjournment, is there any public comment? Okay, without hearing any public comment, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion. All seconds. I have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, declare it 3-0 for adjournment. Jeff at 735.